Hi, thank you for joining this edition of Hangout with Laserman. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic called corneal collagen crosslinking with riboflavin. As you might be aware, keratoconus is bulging of the cornea or the front part of the eye. We've discussed that in one of our previous segments. And basically to recapitulate, it occurs because the cornea is not able to withstand the pressure of the eye. And the reason for this weakening or lack of ability to withstand the pressure is the fibrils or the collagen of cornea are not anatomically strong enough and there is a problem in the structure due to genetic reasons. This disease starts in early childhood, like around teenage years. And so it becomes imperative that we start treating them early on to prevent later on blindness or needing corneal transplant. So in this century, one big advance has been made in this treatment, and that is termed as corneal collagen cross-linking with riboflavin. If you just imagine your hair, and let's say they are collagen fibers of the cornea, if you take one hair, it's so easy to bend or cut with scissors. But if you braid the hair, it becomes very tough to cut. There develops resistance or Young's modulus is increased. So let's say a, one girl has loose hair, so it's very easy to cut her hair, and somebody else has the hair braided, it's going to be tough. So if you take this example and think we are going to convert the collagen fibers from loose fibers into braided. That's the role played by collagen cross-linking. The braids are formed by the activation of riboflavin. So there are two techniques to do this uh, procedure, epi-off and epi-on. What does epi stand for? Epithelium, that's the top covering layer. It's very much similar to super LASIK because super or epi LASIK mean the same thing, removing the epithelium. Which, so it's in a sense, it's less like LASIK and more like PRK. Uh, but uh, once we remove the top layer, we soak the cornea in riboflavin, which is a B, vitamin B. It plays two purposes. One is it uh, allows free radicals to be released upon activation by UV radiation. Second important role it plays is it protects the endothelium and inner structure from UV radiation. That's why it's very important that there will not be any scars in the area to be treated and the cornea be at least 400 microns thick after we remove the epithelium. If it's not enough thickness, we can uh, make the corneas swell up a little bit using hypotonic riboflavin. And there are different treatment regimens. Basically, a set amount of power has to be developed, uh, delivered to the cornea, which has been found to be safe. So if you do low power, you'll have to do treatment for longer time. Let's say you start at 3 milliwatts, you'll have to do it for 30 milli um, minutes. So 3 into 30 is, let's say, 90. So you could do uh, at, um, uh, vary these numbers of power and time. And so if you want to do 10 minutes, um, you will go up on the power. At some point, you cannot increase the power too much because it can be detrimental to the eye and does not give the same results. So right now, let's say we are started doing 10-minute treatments and we have uh, brought up the power to 9. So 9 tens and 90. So either 3 into 30 is 90, 9 into 10 is 90. And these have been found to be safe on research. Now, the other method to do is epi-off. With epioff, you don't re remove the epithelium, but try to push the riboflavin through the intact epithelium. This is not found to be as effective as epioff. Why did we even start doing epion? Because to overcome some of the side effects of epioff, uh, riboflavin uh, cross-linking, uh, which could be delayed epithelial he healing. That means the epithelium doesn't close uh, soon enough, leading to maybe sometimes infections, sterile ulcers, and sometimes it can lead to corneal edema. Rarely there can be deep uh, scarring or haze. But epioff has been found to be effective. And if you want to be sure of what you, that you're going to get the best results, then epioff is the way to go. 
how do we know that because on uh, studies including like optical coherence tomography or OCT you can see a very nice demarcation line at the non treated and non-treated area in epion that line is missing so most of the studies and researchers and our colleagues from around the world feel epion could be an option but not as effective as epi off now we can combine cross-linking with intax either at the time same time uh, when we put the intax we do cross-linking or we can do cross-linking first followed by intax sometimes in, in young kids uh, when I mean young kids I mean teenagers we could do cross-linking first to stabilize or cure the ker keratoconus and do the optical treatment with intax later but the sooner we intervene with cross-linking the better it is to stem the tide of the disease now we are also entering the area where we are going to do some different types of cross-linking called focal cross-linking where we can treat one spot or the central cone part more than the surrounding we are also going to be able to use topographic guided laser to smoothen out the cornea and make it more spher spherical and uniform if you remember the cone is very steep it's very curved so with a little bit of application of PTK or topo guided laser that cone can be shaved off ever so slightly to give the cornea a uniform shape and improve in vision if you have any questions about this interesting but tough and yet a new topic don't hesitate to call me at 323-577-I or email at lasik at kanainstitute.com. Wherever you may be in the world, don't hesitate to join us at noon, Wednesday Pacific time to answer more of your questions. Thank you for listening in. Have a wonderful day.